Father, we thank you so much for your presence in our lives. We thank you, Lord, that you have brought us here for your glory and for your honor. And so we humble ourselves before you that we may have ears to hear what your spirit is saying. I decrease, Father, that you, the greater one, would increase. I thank you, Lord, that it's not my human words of wisdom at work, but a demonstration of your Holy Spirit's power. So I trust, Father, that you are working your works through me so that every person will not just hear, but they will be changed, that they will be transformed in the renewing of their mind so that they are not hearers alone, but they are doers of your word and that fruit will abound to their account. We trust you, Lord God, for what you have started, you will complete. And so we, uh, we bless your name for the process in Jesus name. And all of the believers said, Amen. Amen. We, we bless the name of the Lord for the process. Did you hear that? Yeah. It's a process. And so I encourage you, stay in the process. He's working a work in each of our lives, and we're never complete. It's always a process. So you keep coming to church to hear the word of the Lord. You keep applying his word to encourage yourself. You're growing every day because you're in the process. Never beat yourself up. You just thank God for his grace and his mercy. You trust in the blood of Jesus Christ that he cleanses my conscience from dead works and you get back in there and ride again. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Well, today marks the beginning of our new series entitled The Eyes of Faith. The Eyes of Faith. I wonder if you'll say that with me. The Eyes of Faith. Now, this is a crucial lesson because it's not easy to walk by faith, particularly when life seems to contradict what God has promised. It's also not comfortable to walk by faith when your feelings have gripped you. And it's not reasonable to walk by faith when you haven't necessarily seen changes. But it is necessary. And so I'm here today to help us to develop our faith to see beyond the natural so that we can actually experience a change in the natural. And so if you'll remember in our last series entitled, It Is Finished, we talked about how there are two realms of activity in the earth. The spiritual realm, which is where God is, and the natural realm, which is where we are. And we found out that everything that we need is in the spiritual realm, which means to walk by faith, I must be willing to look beyond the natural realm because there is more at work than meets my natural eyes. And the mature Christian will not just understand this and appreciate this, but the mature Christian will actually respond accordingly. And so our message today is entitled, Stay Focused. Somebody shout out, stay focused. focused. Oh, no, no, shout it out. Stay focused. All right, because one of the greatest challenges in walking by faith is staying focused on the spiritual realm and not become distracted by the natural realm. And that's not easy because that's what it means to respond accordingly. It's not easy because we're living in both the spiritual realm and the natural realm side by side. We're spiritual beings having a natural experience, which means we have to be very intentional about what we're looking at. Oh, I hope you hear me this morning. We have to be very intentional about what we're looking at. Here's what I mean. I'm going to ask them to put the first picture on the screen. On the screen, you will see a picture. For some of you, you are seeing the word liar scrolled across diagonally. For others of you, you are seeing the picture of a man's face. You're both using your eyes, but one of you are focused on one thing and the other of you is focused on the other. You cannot focus on both at the same time. You're using your perspective. Let's see another picture. On this picture, some of you are seeing immediately a table in front of you. 
whereas others of you are looking at the profile of two faces. Again, you're looking through your eyes, but you're focused on one or the other. It is your perspective. It is a point of view. A perspective is the thing that you see, the thing that you, uh, the way that you see, the way that you see people, the way that you see things, the way that you see events in life. And so perspective is not limited to art alone. No, no. But in fact, 2 Corinthians speaks to perspective as it relates in Scripture. There in chapter 4, verse 17 and 18, it reads, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Verse 18 says, While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. But the things which are not seen, but the things which are not seen are eternal. From this scripture, we also find that there are two different perspectives. For some of us, we're either looking at, focused on the things that are seen. And then for others of us, we're looking at or focused on the things that are not seen. So it's not just about art, and it's not just about spiritual matters, but it's in every category of life, whether my spiritual life, my family life, my social life, my work life, I'm always looking at either things that are seen or things that are unseen. And this is important because what you're looking at, what your perspective is, will determine three things. The first thing it will determine, pull out your note sheet if you haven't already, the first thing it will determine is the weight of our challenges in life. The weight of our challenges in life. You see, we all face challenges. We all have difficulty, issues, trials, tribulations. We all experience this. In fact, Jesus said that, that in the world you will have tribulation. But to be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. But perspective is the lens that you use that either enlarges or makes something pronounced. In other words, it magnifies one thing over and above everything around it. And so if I magnify or focus on the challenges, that is the trial, the issues that I'm facing, if I magnify those challenges, then those challenges become weightier and God, he becomes lighter. He becomes insignificant because I cannot focus on two things at the same time. But if, however, I magnify, that is focus, I put my perspective on God, then he becomes weightier, and then the challenge, the problem, the issues, the trials that I'm facing, they then become lighter. They become minor. They become insignificant. And that's what Paul is saying, that when you're focused on what you cannot see, that is, those things that are eternal, then those challenges will be a light affliction. And Paul has credibility because if you look at the afflictions that Paul endured, then you'll see that he must have been focused on something other than the problem. Because there in Corinthians chapter 11, he lists some of the things that he has endured. I thought we should look at them. He says five times, not one time, but five times, the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. They whipped him, y'all, 39 times, five times. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea, not on a cruise ship, just maybe on a log, drifting. 
I have traveled on many long journeys. I have faced dangers from rivers and from robbers. I have faced danger from my own people, the Jews, as well as from the Gentiles. I have faced danger in the cities, in the deserts, and on the seas. And I have faced danger from men who claim to be believers but are not. I have worked hard and long, enduring many sleepless nights. I have been hungry and thirsty. I have often gone without food. I have shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm. Then besides all this, I have the daily burden of my concern for all the churches. Now, not one of these things on this li list seem light to me. Not one. It doesn't seem very light in my mind. Why? Because I'm looking at a different perspective. I'm looking at the things which are seen. I'm considering how Paul must have felt when he was whipped 39 times. I'm looking at how he must have been uh, miserable, drifting on the sea, no comfort in sight. I'm looking at how there was no change in his circumstance, whereas Paul has chosen to look at or focus on the things which are not seen, those things that are eternal. And from his perspective, he can say it was all a light affliction. And so your perspective will determine the weight of your challenge. Number two, your perspective will also determine the duration of our challenges in life. See, your perspective actually affects how long you face your, your affliction, your challenge, your problem, your trial, your tribulation. Paul said, our light affliction is just for a moment. It's just for a moment, meaning it's temporary. His perspective enabled him to see his affliction as a momentary disruption. Now, if we look at history, Jesus went into the desert, the place of trial, the place of testing, tribulation. And he came out in 40 days because of his perspective, his perspective that he would please our father. Whereas Israel, Israel had a different perspective from Jesus a different perspective than Paul, a different perspective than Caleb. And it kept them in their wilderness, in their trial, in their problem, tribulation test. It kept them there for the rest of their lives. Forty years. And then some of them, majority of them, died in the wilderness. They lived a life of futility, Psalm 78 says, because of their perspective. So I thought we should see what their perspective was. That when God made them a promise, I'm giving you a land, a land flowing with milk and honey, go on up and get it. They said, well, can we send spies? Go ahead, send the spies. They saw the spies and then the spies, the spies saw it, and then the spies came back. And the Bible says there in Numbers chapter 13, verse 30, Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. Then verse 31 says, but the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people. For they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants. The descendants of Anak came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. Israel heard the same promise that Caleb heard. It was a promise from God. But they focused on the scene. They focused on what they could see with their natural eye. They focused on the facts. And when they focused on the facts, they talked about how dense the wilderness was. They talked about how tall the giants were. They talked about their shortcomings and their deficits. And because of their perspective, they could not possess the promise. 
but remained challenged their entire life. Whereas Caleb, who was focused on the unseen, focused on the promise that God made him, focused on who their God was. He was, he was the one who said, we are well able. And God redeemed the time so that 40 years later, after all of Israel died, Caleb, 85 years old, is asked, are we able to go up? And he said, I am as strong today as I was 40 years ago. All because of perspective. Your perspective will determine the duration of your challenge. Oh, I hope you hear me this morning. Lastly, your perspective determines the ultimate outcome of our challenges in life. It will determine the ultimate outcome of our challenges in life. Again, Paul says in verse 17, our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us an exceeding eternal weight of glory. That is every challenge, every problem that Paul endured, it could have destroyed him. He was beaten five times. 39 lashes. He was adrift at sea, y'all. It could have destroyed him, but because of perspective, he saw it as working for him. That his light affliction, which is only a moment, is working for him an exceeding eternal weight of glory. That glory is the presence of God, the provision of God, the protection of God. It is the anointing of God. It is the grace of God. All possible because of perspective. So there in 2 Corinthians, we must look at it again. Chapter 4, verse 17. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Look at verse 18. It says, while, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Now, that word while could be better translated when. So we're going to substitute while for when, for our light affliction, that is the weight of our challenge, which is but for a moment, that is the duration of our challenge, is working for us an exceeding eternal weight of glory when, when we do not look at the things which are seen. So whether in my home life, my work life, my social life, my financial life, when I'm in faith, I stop looking at the things which are seen. Otherwise, the affliction will not be light. Otherwise, the affliction will last long, a long time and the affliction will not be working for my good. Amen. But if I stay focused on the spiritual realm, it will affect my ultimate outcome. And so I was thinking about what it looks like to be focused on the spiritual realm. And I thought about Elisha, Elisha and his servant, two different perspectives, perspectives they had there in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 14 and 17. Let me set up the storyline. The Bible tells us that the king of Syria, he wanted to attack the king of Israel. And so he had a plan of his attack. But every time he went to do his plan, somehow he got ambushed. Somehow it didn't work out. It backfired. And so the king of Syria talks to his people and he said, I must have a spy among us because how can they always be ready when we go there to attack? And then one of the servants says, oh, king, there's no one who's a traitor in your camp, but there's this prophet over there named Elisha. And he's telling the king of Israel everything that you plan in your bedroom. And he says, well, we need to go see who this man is. Let's find him. And so the scripture says that they found him in the city of Dothan. And there in verse 14, therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army there. And they came by night and surrounded the city. So this is what you can see. 
Verse 15, and when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, I suppose he's going to the restroom, he goes out and there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, alas, my master, what shall we do? Because he's looking at the scene. And Elisha answered, do not fear. For those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. And then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. See, there is more at work than what meets your natural eyes. That there are more that are for you than they that are against you. That he's working all things out for your good because you love him and you're called according to his purpose. That he's already prepared a table for you in the presence of, his, of your enemies. That he's already delivered you from the power of darkness and translated you into the kingdom of the son of his love. He's already forgiven you already healed you he's already done the work just for you but you must see through the spiritual realm and stop looking in the natural realm and so our action items are to stop 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 looking at the problem the circumstance the issue the trial the tribulation stop looking at it with your natural eye because when you're focused on the problem, you'll see despair instead of hope. You'll see darkness instead of light. You'll see chaos and not have peace. When you focus on the problem, you make, the, you make it bigger than God and inadvertently attract more of the problem to you. And so my prayer is that God would open your eyes. That you may see the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed for those who will see in the spirit realm. That you will open your eyes and see that he's working all things out for your good because he loves you and you're called according to his purpose. Stop looking in the natural and number two, start looking at the promise. Start looking using your spiritual eyes and stay focused. Stay focused regardless of the contradiction. Focus regardless of your feelings. Stay focused regardless of what the facts dictate. Stay focused on what really matters because what really matters has not changed. He is still God. He still sits on the throne. He's still Lord of all. He's still your keeper. He's still your father who is in heaven. He still loves you with an everlasting love. And that will never change. Stay focused. And so I thought I would remind us of a story from Dodie Osteen. She tells her testimony that she was diagnosed with liver cancer. Now, when you hear that, automatically you think death sentence. And so they told the, the family that there would not be much longer. She only had like a week and a half at most. And so her husband took her up out of the bed, 89 pounds, and took her home. And they decided that they would no longer look in the natural, but they would now look in the spiritual because the doctor said there's nothing we can do. But they serve a God. We serve a God who has the final word. And so she began to see what her eyes could not see in the natural. She put pictures all around herself of the days when she was healthy. She put things around her that spoke to health. She got up and went to pray for other sick people, even when there was pain riddling through her body, even when there were opportunities for her to complain. She kept going to pray for the sick because she herself was well. Not in the seen, but in the unseen. She laid her hands on the sick that God would heal 
them. She kept going to church, kept pressing in, kept doing everything that she could possibly do. Sick people don't stay, or healed people don't stay in the bed. So she got up every morning like a healed woman. Pain throughout her body. Unbearable pain, but she pressed in. Holding fast to her confession of hope without wavering. Opportunities to faint but dismissing them. Opportunities to doubt, but discounting them. She pressed in. She pressed in, y'all. Every day declaring what God said for her life. Every morning taking her God medicine. Rather than taking pills, every morning by his stripes, I am healed. Every morning, I thank you, Lord, that you sent your word and healed me. I shall not die, but I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. Her body's still frail, still looking broken, but she still declared Jesus is willing. That in the same way that the leper said, are you willing? She said, Jesus, you are willing to heal me. With long life, you shall satisfy me. I'm not satisfied, therefore I shall live. I thank you, Lord, that you have restored health to me. She was given a week and a half to live. The woman is now 80-something years old. She was given the diagnosis at 48, ready to be cut off in 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 the prime of life. But 80 years old, she still gets up. And takes her God medicine. I thank you, Lord, for being my healer. She's out there, folk who were watching her in the struggle because she chose to keep her perspective and stay focused. Oh, I encourage you, saints, fill in your note sheet. When you stay focused on the spiritual realm, then you will have a faith outlook and a victorious outcome. How do I know? Because God is no respecter of persons. If he could do it for Caleb, if he could do it for Paul, if he could do it for Jesus, if he could do it for this woman, Dodie Osteen, he can do it for you. Amen? Amen. 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 Every head bowed, every eye closed.